A couple of years ago, I would have been more firmly in the kind of, you know, like Tezos, EOS, whatever camp that says there should be explicit on-chain governance. And now I'm like absolutely against that. And I think that stuff is crazy. So if you look at EOS, EOS has these 21 delegate slots. And to get into one of these delegate slots, you have to basically vote um, or, or you have to have uh, people with enough coins vote for you, right? Now, in total, about 17% of the EOS holders have voted at all. And out of those, the delegate that has the largest number of votes is, uh, Bit, is Bitfinex. And uh, Bitfinex only has about 3.5% or so of all the ETH voting for it. Out of that 3.5%, 1.8% is um, coins that are owned by Bitfinex themselves. And the other 1.7% is just random people. So with that 1.8%, Bitfinex was basically able to single-handedly get themselves into this uh, list of 21 delegates when they otherwise would not have been able to get in there. And uh, what this uh, privilege gives them is it basically gives them the, the uh, ability to take a share of the 1% uh, a year annual interest that's allocated to uh, Bitfinex or, or that's allocated to EOS delegates. So basically this, uh, vo what this voting mechanism is created is it creates this kind of super linear pro plutocratic effect where if you're big enough then, and specifically if you're big enough to have more than 1.8% of all the coins, you have enough votes that you can use to basically buy up a delegate slot and then use that delegate slot to earn even more money and get access to this uh, crazy special 2.64% extra premium interest rate that no one else has access to. So that's one example of how I think like coin voting governance really uh, manages to fail in the case of allocating capital. And I actually do think that allocating capital really is the kind of killer app of um, on-chain governance, basically because uh, like ultimately in terms of quality of decision making, right? Like, I mean, I obviously have the um, public opinion that uh, Bitcoin's uh, go governance has been like fairly bad because it's uh, uh, like overly conservative and like and values very specific things to much more extreme extents than most actual users of the technology. But aside from that, I think like Ethereum has been fairly capable of just delivering on feature improvements that people want. Zcash governance has been very capable of delivering on a roadmap that I think uh, Zcash constituents are really happy about. Um, you know, like Bitcoin Cash is starting to put, to push out changes. Um, like all of these other blockchains are starting to launch, and like Plan Monero is doing like community hard forks every six months. And um, I do think uh, that like on the protocol level decision making side, there just isn't really a case to say that um, kind of this kind of like this um, off chain governance really has serious problems that need to be solved. Now, the one big argument that on-chain governance has in its favor is this idea that, oh, now you can have these big treasury pools that inflate the currency by 5% every year and then use that to pay out you know, big bounties and donations. So from a kind of raw and like economic power perspective, it has clear advantages. But just the fact that in um, all of the existing examples of on-chain uh, governance that we've seen, they, um, like, it's, it creates this mechanism that just can be too easily captured and even, it can also be too easily kind of partially captured in such a way that it doesn't fail completely, but at the same time it does create this kind of uh, massive rich gets richer effect where people uh, like at the top of the peak get access to these premium, you know, like 2%, 3%, 4% extra whatever interest rates that no one else has access to. And then 25 years later, the uh, crypto elite are um, by another factor of 2x richer than everyone else. So it's, and, and then on top of that, there's these issues around bribe, bribing attacks. There's these issues around just the facts that if you have 4% of all the coins, you can elect, uh, you know, just outbid everyone else and get delegates. There's um, the fact um, that just regular voters don't really have much incentive to actually serve as a kind of effective quote policeman. So like, I really am pes just pessimistic about the ability of on-chain governance to kind of really properly deliver on all of those things. And I do actually think uh, that first of all, like current levels of funding for, if, at least for Ethereum are uh, definitely, are definitely just enough, and I don't think that you can really get that much further by incre you know, like increasing that by a factor of five or whatever. 
Uh, I don't necessarily think it's even the right approach to try to kind of have bigger economic guns than everyone else. I, um, and then on the Zcash side, like obviously Zcash is pool is smaller because Zcash is a smaller cryptocurrency. But you know, like even still, I feel like um, you know, like between Z Zcash, between Ethereum, between different academic groups, between uh, all this, the open source communities, it just is possible to get enough funding and enough resources to do all of the you know, like hard technological um, and uh, software development that we want to do.